If you want to win some free PSN or Xbox gift cards, all you got to do is be subscribed to my channel, drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below, and don't forget to turn on notifications. Also, if you guys want to get your hands on some cheap Master Prestige accounts for any Call of Duty games, check out Digizani. The link will be down in the description, and make sure to use code GOBLIN. Yo, what is up, guys? It's the Goblin, and welcome back to another Call of Duty Black Ops 3 video. In today's video, I'm reviving an old series from my channel that was one of the most loved series ever, and Basically, I'm so excited for this since Black Ops 3 is still really popular and I've just been in that vibe I've been loving Black Ops 3 lately making a lot of videos on it playing it quite a bit And I wanted to get this series going again because I still always get questions for tips and tricks different Q&A questions So essentially I'll explain what the series is in a second And then I'm gonna give you guys five tips today And these are five like really in-depth tips to make you a serious god at Call of Duty Black Ops 3 So hopefully if you guys can drop a like on this video, let's go for 2,000 likes We're on a roll. We hit 2,000 likes the last night and on the video before that and I've been very hyped off that so 2,000 likes would be amazing on this one as well Also subscribe to the channel if you guys are not already subscribed and let's get into this So what this series is is it's basically how to get better at black ops 3 I did it a lot around last summer I did some episodes for infinite warfare as well and how this series works is you guys leave me in the comment section down below Any sort of questions you have um, about black ops 3 and about tips and tricks So it's essentially just a Q&A, but you're not asking questions like Hey goblin, how old are you? Hey, how, what color is your hair? It's not stuff like that about me It's stuff about the game and so it can help everyone get better at the game So that's what it is So what I want everyone to do here is I want you guys to drop likes on this video And I want you guys all to go down in the comment section down below or it, it, not even right now If you think about something later, you can come back to the video and leave it in the comment section down below But I, I want people to ask me questions that the things they're struggling with in black ops 3 That they need tips on so one thing could be like hey man I re always lose gunfights when I end up hit firing how can you help me out with that stuff like that i'm sure a lot of you guys will remember this series and it's one of my favorite series so i'm going to be doing this pretty much i, I want to do it around once or twice a week uh, if we do get a lot of questions in the comments so let's get out let's get started here i have five big tips here to help you guys right off the start how to be a god in black ops 3 i did a video like this in Inf for infinite warfare like a month or two ago and people seem to love it, it got like a hundred thousand views so let's start talking about that so these tips are all the way, they can help people from beginner all the way to expert. And these tips aren't just like a little thing. I'm going to be going trying to go really in depth with this. So for the first tip I've written down, it's about knowing the map, knowing choke points and understanding the map. So BO3 as a game has a lot of head glitches. Now what a head glitch is, is it is basically a, a point on the map, uh, a piece of cover where people can crouch down behind it or stand behind it and only their head is poking up above it. So it's very hard to win gunfights on that. Now one way to counter head glitches, of course, in these advanced movement games is to double jump and when you're up high, just using the simple trajectory you're going to have a better angle because you're, you're going to be able to look down on them and have that advantage over them rather than looking at them but because there's so many head glitches and there's so many different choke points in black ops 3 you really have to understand that and understand the map based on your team's positioning so what i mean by that is a lot of people think that the mini map is only useful when you have a uav up or when someone's shooting which is not the case the mini map and me personally i'm looking at the mini map more than i'm even looking at my screen and the reason for that is because off of your teammates position if you are a good cod player and you understand the map you can use your teammates position because where your teammates are or are where your teammates are spawning at least is definitely the opposite side of where the enemies are spawning so if, for example a really simple version of this is domination we're all spawning at a domination they're all going to be spawning at C on most maps and in most situations. And that's just how it works. Now, what you have to understand with these head glitches and with these choke points is that a lot of gunfights are going to take place on the same things. For example, on a map like Breach, a lot of gunfights are going to take place right in uh, the hallway right here in this building. A lot of them are going to take place on the wall runs because these are the choke point areas. A lot of them are going to take place right around that middle building. So when you understand the choke points of the map, what you have to do is you always need to aim down sights around every corner and be ready for those gunfights this is a tip i talk about so much but it's because it's such a valuable tip most casual players will just sprint around the map la da 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 with their head in the clouds and if they see someone they'll try to spray them down however if you're actually focused and you want to improve and get good scores if you know this and you're ready for the gunfight call of duty is a game of reactions and not necessarily reactions but it's a game of the first shot usually wins and people who are ready for gunfights will usually win so if you're ready for the gunfights you're aimed down sights around a corner for example a corner like i am right here in this gameplay where a lot of gunfights are going to happen you're going to be able to win 
those gunfights and get that edge up on your uh, opponents and that's definitely a very very key tip Next thing I have to talk about is about rush routes and being able to predict enemies rush routes. Now, Call of Duty, like I've said, it's mostly casual players. Of course, if you're playing UMGs or you're playing the competitive rank playlist, you're going to get some better players. But if you're just playing TDM or Domination or Chaos Mosh, Pet Nuketown, stuff like that, you're going to be getting mostly casual players. Usually there's, uh, you know, maybe three or four really good players in each lobby and the rest are pretty casual. So players are very predictable in their rush routes once you understand the map and the common spawns the rush routes come uh, naturally. And what I like to talk about with that is, for example, we use this map uh, Breach right now because that's where this gameplay is on. If people are going to spawn at the back of the building that I'm in right now, they're going to go one of three ways. They're going to run through the building to the left or to the right. Now, based off my experience, I know that most of those players are going to run through that building. So if you set up and you camp in that building, if you know the enemies are going to be spawning there, you can take advantage by getting the upper hand on them and knowing their common rush routes another even simpler uh situation is on nuketown when people spawn at the back uh, of, of with the fences where are they going to run usually they're going to run right by the side of the building or through the garage every single time so by setting up in there you're able to take advantage of that people are very predictable on this game players are very predictable it's not like they're going to spawn in run right one time run left one time go up in the building some players will do that but for the most part people have their minds programmed and it's just sort of on a loop that when Whenever they and I'm guilty of this too. Whenever I spawn, I I never go top building on Nuketown. I never go bottom building. I pretty much always just go down the sides because that's straight to the action. And if you know that, you can take advantage of people by you know understanding those routes and setting up for that. These are kind of more complex tips, but I'll get into the more simpler tips later. But these are really good stuff that can help you become a god and become a much better player at Black Ops 3. No matter if you're a 0.5 KD player or a 5 KD player right now. All this stuff can help. My next tip is play consistent maps and game modes and use consistent class setups. Basically, what you want to do is if you actually want to improve at the game, you're going to want to use the best guns, the best perks, and the best specialists pretty much all the time. Now, this is not a problem. I don't, I can't explain it all in today's video, but as you guys know, I'm pretty much known for my class setups, and I have a class setup for pretty much every single gun in Black Ops 3. All you have to do is type in the gun class setup or Green Goblin HD in the gun and class setup. You'll find it all on my channel, and you always want to, of course, you know, you're going to want to mess around sometimes, pull up the shotgun, but if you actually want to improve and be a god, Using the best guns is always going to be the best situation. The M8A7, the, the VMP, the KN44, this stuff is always going to be the best. As far as the best perks, that depends on the class setup. You can watch more of my class setup videos to you know learn more about that. And as far as the best specialists, you'll see for me, for the most part, I simply just run combat focus most of the time because that leads up to my kill streaks, which leads to more kills, which leads to in turn more kills. You know, because when you're stacking kill streaks, it's like a snowball effect. You can keep stacking them and keep stacking them. Um, but combat focus is good the scythe is good active camo is good tempest is good those are pretty much the basis ones that if you're using any of those you should be good um but i don't really mix it up and run hive and stuff like that because while that can be fun we're talking about the tips to make you like these are try hard tips we're talking about right now we're not talking about how to have fun i mean you're gonna have fun when you do well at least that's how it works for me when i'm playing well in the game and when i drop a 50 and one i had fun that game not when i'm going 20 and 20 running around with the baseball bat but every player is different and of course you can these are these are tips for when you want to go try hard mode next tip i have here is going to be talking about the settings now a lot of people are always concerned with what do you run this what, what sensitivity what what settings on your controller settings are diff are different for every single person Personally, I use sensitivity 6 and 6, I think. As long as your sensitivity, you're not missing shots because of your sensitivity, it's not really an issue. A lot of people hype sensitivity up to be something that it's really not. The only time you should change your sensitivity is if, okay, my aim is kind of whack. I haven't played in a month or two. I'm missing a lot of shots. Maybe I should drop my sensitivity down a little bit. That's when you should. But mine is 6 and 6. Like I said, I usually keep the horizontal and the vertical ones on the same track. Um, even if you're running a high sensitivity sensitivity if you can hit all your shots and you're not missing because of it 
you're, you're, you're Gucci, you're doing good. But when you realize, okay, I'm missing a lot of shots, simply just drop it down one, then see if you need to drop it down more. And that's on the horizontal and the vertical. That's what I say with sensitivity. Another thing with the settings is aim assist. You always want to have aim assist on. Aim assist should always be enabled. Um, don't listen to people who say, I play better with it off. And that's just complete bull. You always want to have this on. And I suggest that you everyone check their settings next time they get on and make sure you have aim assist on because by having that off literally can make you twice as bad as a, of a player like even if i was playing with aim assist off i can't even imagine it would be very hard to get nuclears and stuff like that you always want aim assist on because how this works is on pc games there's no aim assist because with a mouse and keyboard you're able to be very very accurate however with um the console it's it's, it's a bit harder with the playstation controller or the xbox controller or whatever to be perfectly accurate so they give you a tiny bit of, of aim assist which means when you when you aim right beside someone it's going to sort of pull you in like gravity sort of like how it works on zombies of course it's not as strong as it is on zombies but aim assist is definitely helpful and you always want to have that enabled um, when you're playing of course this applies to console gamers only because uh, that's where it just doesn't exist on the PC next thing is about the settings with jumping around now these games World War 2 is gonna be our boots on the ground game but this Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare these games are still so much based around movement jumping around and all that sort of stuff now with the settings a lot of people like to run bumper jumper now what bumper jumper is is it normally you'd be using your x or your a button depending on your console to jump and with that it's kind of hard because your right thumb is what you use for hitting the buttons and what you also use for aiming on the thumbstick so to pull it off of the thumbstick to jump around it means your aim is going to be go wonkers and you're not going to be able to hit your shots essentially so a lot of people like to run bumper jumper um, a lot of people like to run tactical button layouts which changes your knife button with your crouch button i definitely recommend everyone test out tactical because it makes it when you jam on the on the thumbstick you crouch and you can drop shot people like that even though drop shots aren't that important in this game and then you use the b button or the circle button to knife i've been running on tactical for years now bumper jumper i personally don't use because i use a scuff controller which i'm sure a lot of you guys know this i'm sponsored by scuff controllers what a scuff controller does is it has paddles on the back which allow you to jump and allow you to knife without moving your fingers off of the, the aiming and and off of the triggers so a scuff controller is very very good they are tournament tournament legal they're, they're like all the pro player pretty much i think every single pro player uses the scuff except for a couple um, who play on claw but scuff controllers i've been using for five or six years also and they've just worked so well for me and i'm sponsored by them if you guys want to get a scuff they are pretty expensive like over a hundred dollars but you can use code goblin for a discount um that's all the links for that is all in the description however i know not everyone wants to get a scuff and not everyone can afford a scuff that's why bumper jumper and there's also some different settings you just want to mess around and find which one you could probably go into a private match play against some uh combat training uh, jump around and figure out which one allows you to aim and shoot while also using the movement system effectively and that is the one that you're going to want to use now that's pretty much it for the settings the next one is going to be about kill streaks i always get people asking about kill streaks and the thing is with kill streaks you have to it's different for every single person you have to use kill streaks that you can get at least once or twice a game pretty much that's how i like to say it don't watch my videos and see that I run the hater, the wraith, and the raps, but you yourself, you're, you're new to Call of Duty and you have a .5 KD, uh, don't try to aim for those higher kill streaks. You know, everyone started at a certain point. When I first started for my first few months of Modern Warfare 2, I think, I had like a .8 KD, so I would run lower kill streaks, and that's just using your brain and being smart. You want to run kill streaks that you can get and also kill streaks that work based on the maps for example a sentry gun is a very very good kill streak on nuketown it's a very good kill streak on combine however on a bigger map redwood infection a sentry gun probably isn't as effective as like a, a wraith would be or as a lightning strike would be on an open map compared to a map that's more foreclosed you know you want to change your kill streaks based on the maps but as far as ones that are, are good for people of all skill levels uav counter uav always run those man if you don't know what to run just throw on UAV, um, counter UAV, lightning strike, Cerberus, Talon. These are all mid-level streaks that are very, very strong in my opinion. Um, and then on the higher level streaks, you have, of course, the Hater, 
you have the wraps you have the wraith those are pretty much the ones that i like to run the gi unit i know optic skump likes to run that one a lot and it can do work but sometimes it seems like it's just so hard to get that you're better off just running off the wraps the hater and the uh, wraith i love those ones because they're pretty easy easy to cycle you get the hater you finish off those streaks you call them in and those streaks help you spawn trap the enemies help you get kills to wrap up and re basically recycle up to your next set of streaks which keeps the streak going allows you to get nuclears allows you to get a big kill streaks 100 plus gameplays and a bunch of stuff like that and that's essentially what i like to do with that so hopefully you guys did enjoy this video I gave a bunch of tips. I've been, this is like a 15 minute commentary. It's been a while since I've done a lot of the, or one of these. Please drop a like on this thing, guys. And like I said, leave me comments down below. Ask me anything. I want some new comments because I haven't done this series for a while. All the comments are from like 10 months ago, nine months ago. I want new stuff down in the comment section down below. Please feel free to ask me anything. Drop a like on this thing. If you guys made it to the end of the video, you have to smack that like button. I am almost out of breath. I'm going to go t take some sips of some water after this. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Have a great night. Thank Thanks for watching, subscribe for Cookie and Outlooky, and I'm out. Peace.